next session. So a quick intro about Tamil Manan. He is a cloud native tech lead at RCCM and a former Kubernetes SME at VMware. Yeah. Thank you, Cloud Tamil Manan. Uh, hey, hi, hello, welcome uh, uh, everyone. Uh, the lunch was really good. Uh, hope uh, everybody is not sleeping. Is anybody sleeping here? If yes, uh, please uh, check the Kubernetes quiz, which is uh, shared by uh, KCD Chennai. It was uh, really uh, uh, useful. It helps me to think on the feet. So take a moment to check the quiz. So uh, uh, this. Today I'm going to talk about uh, constructing a heterogeneous or uh, remote Kubernetes co control plane using connectivity. So before we get into the session, uh, just a bit of introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Tamil Wanan. Uh, I'm working as a tech lead at uh, RCCM. Uh, my hobbies are uh, playing badminton. So I even uh, bought the badminton kit to uh, KCD Stenheim because I was traveling from Bangalore, so I thought I can play with my friends over here. So let's get into the session. So this is a quick overview of what we are going to cover for the next 15 minutes. So I'm just going to talk about why we need to consider about remote control plane and what are the potential uh, use cases for uh, a remote uh, control plane and what are the building blocks and how things make this happen. So hope everybody is known to this slide either while preparing for CKA or your interviews, definitely you have gone through this slide, uh, this picture. So basically I was just trying to give a bit introduction about how the communication between the control plane and the work plane will work here so that that will set the tone for the rest of the slide. So basically we'll first bring up the control plane nodes and then uh, the worker nodes will register to the control plane. Basically it's a hub and spoke model. So the worker node will register itself. So whenever you use kubectl commands like kubectl get nodes, you'll get the status of the node, whether the node was in ready state or pending state. So basically, your worker node talks to the control plane. So the worker plane, worker node has a health probe, and uh, it sends the status to your control plane for every 30 seconds to, by talking to the API server. And we all know our API server should be reachable. And uh, similarly, the API server can reach to your uh, Kubelet API, so Kubelet has also an API server running. So whenever a node selector selects a particular node for uh, running your pod, your API server will send the pod spec to your Kubelet to spin up the pod in that particular node. And similarly, whenever you use kubectl exe command or kubectl uh, uh, log command, so basically the user request goes to the API server and the API server will talk to your uh, Kubelet API. So what I'm trying to say here is like the communication between the control plane and worker, worker node is uh, bi-directional and it requires a fast and reliable communication as well. So when you are within the same data center, basically within a, in a general purpose uh, use case, your control plane and your worker node will be in the same data center, which means it will be in the same L2, L3 domain. So the control plane can able to reach the worker nodes and worker node can also reach the control plane. So it works out of the box. But these are the few use cases like Kubernetes at edge. For example, uh, running a Kubernetes for Internet of Things or autonomous vehicle, or you have a telecom use case like 5G where your RAN network is running on edge devices. So for those use cases, right, you don't have a luxury of running your control plane and data plane in the edge premises. In those cases, your control plane will be mostly running in your uh, uh, cloud or, you, or your on-perm and you only have your worker nodes running in your uh, edge premises. And similarly, in case of hybrid cloud, uh, where there are chances like you want to explore multiple cloud vendors, so you have started using with one cloud vendor, and then you want to move to migrate to other cloud vendor, so you can spin up the worker nodes in other cloud platform so that you can have the control plane in one, con one cloud provider. So the other use case is about uh, co-located control plane which is similar to the other talk like what uh, Francis have talked earlier about like uh, open cluster management. So to manage for multi-cluster management, so usually what you have, you have a control plane, which will be a control plane cluster where you run your all your control planes and you have a, a worker nodes or clusters which basically tenant aligned. So basically the tenant might be 
uh, any user who runs in on-perm or cloud. So you basically spin up the worker nodes in the tenant-specified account or the VPC or cloud. And for ease of use, uh, the SaaS provider might be running the control plane in their premises. So in this case also, you require a remote control plane sort of thing. So basically, this is a use case where you can easily manage the clusters, multiple clusters, and uh, give a, a cluster as a service if you want to provide. This is how typically uh, any uh, uh, multi-cluster uh, uh, management system will work here, actually. So, so whatever use cases which we have discussed so far, right? So for those use cases, your uh, communication between the control plane and data plane won't happen directly. It is, happens through a firewall. Or it, it, might hap it, it might go over an internet or untrusted network. So in this case as well, right? So you have an API server. We all know like API server should be reachable. It should be mostly a, have a public IP. So the worker node can able to reach the API server. But in this case, the API server can't reach the worker node because the worker nodes are behind the NAT. So it doesn't have a public IP. It is not directly reachable from the control plane. So one easier option might be you can give a public IP to the worker nodes. But we all know, right, it is not a right option from a cost perspective. And also from a security perspective, it is not advised to expose the worker nodes directly. So the option, I mean, uh, Kubernetes have think about it earlier. So they had an option called uh, SSH reverse tunnel. When you set up a remote control plane like this, uh, earlier Kubernetes, uh, till version 1.19, they used to provide something called uh, SSH reverse tunnel when you, set up the, when you set up a controller. So in that, the controller and worker node will have a SSH reverse tunnel. Basically, the worker node will have a SSH reverse tunnel with the controller. But there are few issues with SSH reverse tunnel. It requires a non-overlapping IP space between the controller nodes and the worker nodes. And also, there are few CVEs uh, uh, explored in those areas. So with version 1.19, uh, Kubernetes soft support for SSH reverse tunnel to set up the control plane to worker node connectivity. And there are other options we have. We can set up an VPN between the controller and worker node so that on top of it, it will act as an overlay network so that your controller will think your worker nodes are in the same node, or in the, sorry, it's in the same network. But the problem with setting up an uh, VPN is like it, it adds additional costs, and it is an, uh, there is an vendor lock-in whenever you go for a VPN-based solution. So Kubernetes have thought about it. Uh, they have come up with a special interest group called API Server Network Proxy. Basically, the difference, if you see from the previous slide and this, right, it is the same topology. We have running a tunnel, actually. So earlier, it was an SSH tunnel. Now we are forming a gRPC tunnel. So the communication between the worker node and the control plane will happen through a gRPC tunnel. So the worker node, when register, itself with the control plane, right? It will form an gRPC tunnel so that the whatever API communication happens will go over uh, gRPC. So what's going to make a difference between an SSH or gRPC? So basically, if you see how gRPC works, right? So gRPC is a, a protocol which is based on top of HTTP2. So it natively supports uh, mul multiplexing, connection multiplexing. So once you have a single connection, which is happened between your worker node and the control plane, within the same connection, the further request will use the same connection. That's how a connection multiplexing works. And also, uh, gRPC is, uh, supports uh, bidirectional streaming. So within the same connection, both server and client can talk to each other. And we all know gRPC scale much better. So that's the reason uh, we have, uh, G they have considered gRPC here, actually. So I'm going to talk a bit about how this whole setup will work and how do we set up this in our cluster. So, so this is a configuration. So, so there is a two set of configuration. One is at the controller side and the one is at the worker node. So the controller node, basically, first we need to tell from an API server what are the egress traffic we want to do a proxy. So in this case, uh, uh, I have mentioned its cluster, which means basically the cluster traffic between control plane and the worker node needs to be proxy to the gRPC 
And as I was mentioning here as a transport protocol as UDS, which is a Unix domain socket. So in, in this case, I was running my uh, connectivity proxies in the same node as my control plane. But there are use cases if you want to have a better scaling, you can run the connectivity server in separate node outside your control plane as well. So in those cases, you need to mention the IP address of your uh, connectivity server. So in this case, I was running connectivity server as a static pod. So, so to run a static pod, you can just have the connectivity image and run it in a control plane. And in the worker node, you need to run a daemon set, which is nothing but the connectivity agent. And that needs a uh, few details to reach the control plane. So basically, you need to have the VIP IP of your control plane or the domain name of your control plane that you need to pass on the certificates of the control plane. So that's how the Kubernetes uh, connectivity, uh, connectivity agent will talk to the connectivity server and set up the tunnel to make the remote control plane work here. So uh, this, is, this is just a 15 minute session, so I don't have any live domain assets. So uh, this is a Slack channel you can follow, so which is API server network proxy. So if you have any doubts in setting up the this, uh, um, connectivity or API server network server, you can reach out this Slack channel. And these are the reference slides you can watch. And if you feel this slide is useful, you can scan this QR code and get the slides. So uh, thank you. So if you have any questions, we can take or time permits. So I have a couple of minutes left. Uh, any questions you have? Okay. So when we have a remote control plane, what about the latency? Because you know the uh, data plane is in a different segment and it is using VPN tunnels, right, to connect. There is a huge latency, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's a very good point. So, but if you for a, it is only recommended for a constrained uh, use cases where you are. Uh, uh, for applications like Edge, where you have a limited connectivity. So uh, in those cases, I mean, uh, you can configure your probe in such a way that you don't, your control plane doesn't tell that your uh, application is dead. You can increase you know, the time. The thing is, you know, each and every, uh, you know, uh, everything uses API server, right? Yes. So even for HPA, it needs to go for API server and then come back. So even a, a small, uh, you know, a 2 MS uh, additional latency is in terms of scalability, it is like not a good thing, right? Yeah, I agree. But f uh, okay, if from a user to API server, I don't think you have any issues because it is in your cloud permissions or or in your ARM form. But from API server to your data, data plane, plane, yeah, definitely there was an latency. But you need to tune in such a way that it won't impact your uh, 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 workload it. which is running. So I agree, there was an uh, l a latency involved in it, but it is only for few. Cases where and also, you know, you said that it may establish a gRPC pipelines, uh, VPN tunnels, Correct. right? gRPC is an unencrypted uh, tunnels. Then how can you know the data would be safe? No, it is. Uh, if you see the slide, right? It was. It's a uh, encrypted uh, gRPC yes, actually. Because so gRPC by natively it is unencrypted. That's why it is faster than VXLAN. No, it is like uh, it's an encrypted. Uh, Packet actually, basically, gRPCs is uh, in uh, on top of HTTPS, okay. so it's an encrypted protocol. So, okay. thanks.